this is Taratupa, an island of trade winds, tropic palms, and blue ocean breaking across coral reefs into secluded lagoons. This is the world of Stevenson, Conrad, and Gauguin, men who were inspired to great art by the beauty of the South Sea paradise. But even paradise has its hell. And in the late spring of 1942, Taratupa became an inferno. When it was over, this was all that remained in the wake of the Japanese conquest. The charred rubble of a small American PT boat base that had been shelled out of existence. But as in every war, there were survivors. Those who clung stubbornly to life, no matter what the odds. For men like these, survival is a personal thing, as large as the war itself, or as small as the piece of ground they occupy. They live from day to day, minute to minute. Lives geared to watching and waiting, and often coming to grips with the enemy. To the survivors of Taratupa, any intruder out of the night is the enemy. Told your great great grandpappy at Bunker Hill, Christy. Not till you see the whites of his eyes. Little land in the water. He comes up on the beach, chances are he'll step on a mine. Tie that shoe. I figure on making some shirts out of it. message for Tojo. Collect. I don't know for sure, but I think we're making a mistake. He doesn't look Japanese to me. It's hard to tell. Maybe you're right. Oh, come on, boats. Ain't nothing but Japanese for a hundred miles around. Well, at least we ought to make sure first. Besides, a mine had wrecked that radio. All right, we'll take him.
Now, what did I tell you? He's wearing regulation gear, and this is a service 45. Could be a German. They're in this war, too, you know. Well, just the same, he looks more like the halfback that kept me warming the bench for two years at SC. Well, better proof here. He's Navy. Lieutenant Richard Durham. Hey, Willie, did you hear? Hey, he's one of us, a Navy lieutenant. You don't have to tell me. Who else would bring a brand new outfit to a dump like this? Say, maybe they finally found a way to get us off the island, huh? <laughs> This country of pearl, Lieutenant. But at least it's got a roof. Well, that's something. Uh, say, we're all kind of anxious to know. Does your being here mean we're going to get off this island? Where'd you say Commander McHale was? Oh, well, uh, like I said, I don't know exactly. Uh, but I sent Christie out looking for him. The ranking officer in charge and his men don't even know where he is. Well, the truth is, we don't exactly go by the book here. You mean you haven't, up till now? Yes, sir. Anything else I can do for you? No, I uh, think you've done quite enough for tonight, Gallagher. Uh, I'm sorry for the way we, uh, well, for what happened on the beach. Uh, but we couldn't be sure who you were. It's all right. As far as I remember, I just tripped and fell. Thanks. Gallagher. Yeah. See if you can dig yourself up a regulation, Cat. Yes, sir. up like he's going to a P-Ray. I suppose one of us better take him in tow. Not me, Boats. I plum forgot how to salute. Willie. Beginning to wonder where everyone was. Oh, uh, Brown, you know. Mm hmm. Must be rough trying to run this place short handed. Suppose all the men have to uh, stand double watches. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Something like that. Well, it'll be easier once we get squared away. Now, uh, should we go see Commander McHale? Uh, sorry, he ain't back yet. What do you mean, he's not back yet? Oh, well, the uh, natives are having a big ceremony at the other end of the island. Uh, they generally last a while. So he said for you to make yourself at home. To make myself? Gallagher, I have orders for him, and they're to be delivered immediately. Don't worry, Lieutenant. He'll be here pretty soon. That's Nosey Nelly. Take cover.
Stay put, Lieutenant. He's gonna make another pass. Nosy Nelly who? He comes around every couple of days, uses the shacks for target practice. So far, they think there's only natives left here. So we keep it that way. warning system, no sand bunkers, not even a trench to take cover in. Seems to me this place could do with a lot more than just a little squaring away. Wouldn't you say so, Gallagher? Well, it needs something, I guess. Maybe if you have a good look around, Lieutenant, you can tell us just exactly what that is. Circumstances, I think we can forget the formalities. Yes, sir. Well, this is Chief Mamaro and his wife. Number 11 wife. Outside, number 5 daughter. Uh, how do you do? Lieutenant, you have bat. Bat? Me? My wife fixed. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. It's a local custom, Durham. Anyone who visits the chief bathes with him. A sign of respect. But sir, I, I... Uh, will you excuse the lieutenant this time, chief? I believe he wants to see me on some official business. Pitch your business. Lieutenant, next time. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Mm. Then I tell myself you will not come here now. I not see you. Native customs count for a lot out here. This business of taking a bath, for instance. <laughs> Got started when the first missionaries came to the island. They brought these tubs of all things and assisted the natives use them. So they got the idea it was the only proper way to entertain white men. <laughs> Makes a major project out of just saying hello. I see. I understand you have uh, orders for me. Yes, sir. From Admiral Torrance at Espiritu Santo. Oh. Oh, uh, have some whiskey? Made a product, but passable. No, thank you. <laughs> What's wrong, sir? This business about reactivating. Does headquarters think by any chance that Taratupa has become some kind of a rest camp? I think you know better, sir. Well, I'll tell you what I know, mister. Squadron 12 had the living tar kicked out of it. The Japs hit us with a cruiser, sank every boat we had. And what was left, they smashed with an airstrike. There were 150 men in this squadron. At last count, there were exactly 18 left. I understand. Do you? Well, I wish I did. For two months we've been stranded here, cut off with practically no hope of getting out. And if we ever forget that, the Nips are always around to remind us. 
So if we haven't been on combat duty, mister, it's as close to it as I ever want to get. Well, Admiral Torrance told me that if the base was too badly damaged to be reactivated, I was to radio him and he'd try to figure some way of getting us off the island. be the day. That will do the best we can. You're to be my executive officer. Yes, sir. Service on a California, Lexington, Annapolis, I suppose. Yes, sir. Well, you have my permission to go ahead, Mr. Durham. And good luck to you. Thank you, sir. spear or, or thrown coconut. He need to calm blood. Should take bad. Yeah, he get one soon enough. Coldest one he's ever had. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Chief. Cheers. Sam makes some pretty fine jewelry, huh? Harris! What? You're washing the natives' clothes? Why, well, dry them, too! These tin fish make a great mangle. I've got a pretty good business going. You know, when I get home, I'll sell the coral. Let's try. Oh, come on. Will you stiffs get on the ball? 
I don't like this no more than you do. But Lieutenant Angelface gave us orders. Good morning, Lieutenant. Just running through our regular shakeup. Where are the rest of the men? Uh, a sick call. Carry on. All right, uh, now we'll try some hand-to-hand -hand stuff. Christy, you first. Ah, oh, come on, both. You know I can't handle anybody your size. But that's the whole idea of what I've been teaching you, so you can. Now, let's go. I told you so! Gallagher. Maybe if you showed him again. With me. Okay by me, Lieutenant. Now, I want all of you to watch this closely. Hey, time you're ready. Sir. I'm sure as far as you're concerned, everything's perfect, just the way you want it. Something bothering you, Mr. Durham? Yes, sir. You might put it that way. I thought I'd seen just about everything around here. But it's still, the commanding officer making whiskey. Well, yeah. Hey, we give Chief Mamaru a few bottles in return for the favors he's done us. Well, mostly alcohol is used to keep plumber's laundry going. Laundry? Still? Pearl diving? Would you tell me, Commander, are you running a torpedo boat squadron or a collection of small businesses? I'm giving my men something to do to keep them from going island crazy, mister. Well, how about what they're supposed to do, sir? Stand watches and repair the base. Clear the mines out of the beach and raise the boats. If you're so concerned with occupational therapy, there's more than enough to go around. So I've noticed. You've been trying to start quite an ambitious program. I've just been trying to carry out my orders. Organize this squadron. Get in some kind of shape. So far, all I've received is insubordination and double talk. And downright disobedient. And maybe you deserve it. God knows these men have been through enough without being pushed around and second guessed by a skipper. Skipper, condition red. I'll put her up. We'll finish this later. What's going on? Sorry, Lieutenant. Ain't got time for talk. Wait a minute. 
reports in my radio. Uh, sorry, Lieutenant. Skipper's ordered. Where is he? He's down at the beach. Come on, stand with us. Take me right to the station. their people, not just ships and planes. They have bodies and minds and itchy trigger fingers. If you stick your head out any further, that machine gun will be delighted to blow it off. Are they coming ashore? Not likely. Just their weekly inspection. Weekly inspection? Even though they've smashed us, they want us to stay smashed. Sometimes they just cruise up and down the beach like that. Once in a while, they land and check the whole area. Now, do you understand how far out of line some of your orders have been? No, I don't, sir. I think that if we only... Look. If one of their mines in the cove were missing, or uh, the hut was repaired, or the radio antenna was put up and you started sending, They'd know some of us were still alive, and they'd come looking for us. But, sir, we could handle them if... That is, unless you've lost your nerve. That's what it is, isn't it? It's not your men, it's you. You're the one who's had it. You're right on the edge of being afraid. Wait. 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 time, sir. Who ordered the antenna put up? Oh, Skipper. He said you'd be needing the set right away. We'll have it ready for you in a couple of minutes. Where is the commander? I don't know, Lieutenant. Cash him in? Sir? What do you say? We know why the radio's being set up. What kind of message you're going to send back? I don't think that's any concern of yours, Gallagher. Begging the lieutenant's pardon, but it is. Because you're going to have to cash us all in, right along with him. Don't push it. You're doing the pushing, Lieutenant. Way too far when you come out and call him practically the same as a coward. That's not what I said, but he is sick and he's worn out. And why wouldn't he be? 
Never a minute's rest, not since this whole rough mess started. Running patrols every night, watching his boats go down one after the other, trying to keep the squadron going with his bare hands. And winding up with nothing but this. Sure, that'll wear a man down, uh, but it don't finish it. Not any more than it's finished all of it. A speech like that could finish you, Gallagher, anywhere in the fleet. Mr. Durham? It's worth a dozen court-martials just to set you straight. Then let me set you straight, too. I can't cash in the commander, as you put it. I can only report if there's anything left of this squadron worth salvaging. to the best you have to give? Right now, the best I have to give is to keep them all on their feet and in one piece. But, Commander, you're not the only officer who's ever lost any men. And these aren't the only grades in the Pacific. There are lots more. There'll be hundreds more before it's over. That's enough, Lieutenant. <laughs> Your patriotism does you credit. But it's wasted here. And so are all these men. If you crawl in a home, pull a lid on Look, it. Look, you! Sir, hey, Jasper! Yeah! The message from base headquarters. We just got the radio hooked up. There's no telling how long they've been trying to reach us. What is it, sir? Marine Raider Battalion pinned on beach, west side Lanakai. Evacuation imperative. Use all available boats. Enemy crews are known en route to attack Beachhead. ETA dawn 25 April. That's tomorrow morning. And the Jap cruiser has eight inch gun. Yeah. You've seen what they can do. All available boats. Can we raise one from the cove? <laughs> Stand a better chance of getting one sent in here by V mail. Well, how about native outriggers? Canoes? The news, it would take three days to reach Lanakai. So, nosy Nelly. Now yeah, she's all we need now. Yeah. As a matter of fact, she is. Come on, take cover, both of you. Come on, come on. It's 
scout plane did a fast job of reporting. Japanese and went on shore. Well, it's all quiet up there. Wouldn't be if any of them were left. It looks like we're at Torpedo outfit again. Now, here's Tianga and here's Lanakai. If we cut down through the south channel between Anawi and Tianga, I think we can get off the beachhead about three hours before dawn. Well, that doesn't give us much time. Maybe if we move the battalion to Manawi, we could do it in three or four short trips. I haven't finished yet, Mr. Durham. Is that all a boat means to you is evacuation and retreat? Well, those are our orders. Yes. Our orders are to save that battalion. I can't think of a better way than knocking off one enemy cruiser. Oh, well, that's fine. That's, that's fine. But just how are we supposed to knock off that enemy cruiser? Well, for one thing, we'll be in a Japanese boat flying a Japanese flag. With any kind of a break, we can get close enough to plant a couple of torpedoes, even if we only cripple it. That Jap boat doesn't have any torpedoes. Must have used them up, or else dumped them to carry the extra men. They had nothing aboard bigger than machine guns. And there's three of our boats in the bottom of the cove. They didn't go down with empty tubes. Will our torpedoes work in a Japanese boat? Well, there'd be no problem. Ah, oh, forget it. Torpedoes are rusty and full of barnacles. Wouldn't even make good sea anchors. Sir, the orders I brought said we were to improvise. Mr. Durham, have you ever tried to improvise a torpedo? Plumber Harris improvised a laundry and a mangle. 
Yeah. The mango. We gave Plummer the last two tin fish we had in the ammo shed. What about the torpedo warheads and engines? I stored them away. They're still good. And why can't we improvise as well as Plummer Harris? Welcome aboard, Mr. Durham. <laughs> You don't leave any of this stuff hanging around. Burn it if necessary. All right, sir. Oh. And you and the others be out of this area by daylight. The Japanese will be sure to send over that patrol plane when they don't hear from the boat. Yes, sir. Jenkins, if worst comes to worst, trust Chief Pomero. You'll be of some help. All right, sir. Well, that's all, I guess. Good luck to you, boy. Good luck to you, Skipper. Thanks. Mister, you have a bad habit of coming indoors as if you were launching an attack. Well, I'm sorry if I haven't made a, a good impression. I don't get your belt in a knot. Matter of fact, I wanted to offer you my apologies and my thanks. For what? You were right about me. I was trying to dig a hole and crawl in. And I was getting in so deep, I needed help getting out. I just want you to know I appreciate that. Well, it's been a two-way street. I learned a lot, too, from you and your men. That uh, chart on a channel minefield, for instance. Christy mapped it out when he was diving for pearls, didn't he? Yeah. I guess we both come out ahead, huh? Well, not quite, sir. I understand you've already picked your crew, and I'm being left behind. Well, we're the only two officers on the island. If this thing doesn't come off, someone's got to stay here in command. If this thing doesn't come off, who's left here won't matter. The Japanese will see to that, and you know it. Uh. You ever handle a PT boat before? I tested PTs in the Gulf for a year after I left Annapolis. Well, what are you waiting for? Get your gear together. It's already on the boats. See you there. Everything's in Japanese. I hope we can handle it all right. Well, a motor's a motor and a boat's a boat. <laughs> Let's get her underway. Right. Stand by! All right, Plummer, turn her over!
Two points off the court foul. That's for now. We'll get as close to shore as we can. Stay this side of the channel. They may have the channel mine. Right, Skipper. That cruiser should be coming from Rafal. We'll patrol this stretch right in here. It's the only deep water in direct line with the beachhead. Different men, different rules, different ideas, but all with the same purpose and the same result. It's called democracy, a mighty successful way of life. 